Today is June 6, 2101. I'm afraid that this may be one of the last of my writings. The water's finally run out down here, just like it did in the old world all those years ago. There's water to be found up there. We'll be the ones to find it. They are the ones who might have a chance to rebuild civilization. Reginald here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Homeseek, which is a survival city builder due to release on July 20th. I downloaded and played this originally during NextFest as a demo. However, July 20th is now only six days away as I'm re-recording this intro, so I'll be going through this with the same format as usual, but just understand that I understand the game is due soon, and any feedback I might have provided that wasn't in my feedback form I submitted is not even close to capable of being adopted. Still, the feedback I have for this game was fairly minimal, and I'm very excited to see this game released. Homeseek is a city builder, and something of a survival and logistics game, where the main adversary is the inhospitable environment. You play as the erstwhile commander of an expedition intending to attempt to survive in the hostile wasteland after what appears to have been a nuclear war brought about by a lack of water. Your job is to make the city survive and grow and prosper in the face of terrible problems like drought, no water, contaminated water, and so on. This game is primarily played on two separate screens. There is a main sort of city builder screen where you manage your incoming resources and outgoing resources relative to one another. And this is the main challenge of the game is keeping your citizens supplied with the resources they need to continue to work. Then you will assign those resources, the citizen resources to various tasks to achieve them. And you build buildings in order to satisfy your growing economy and needs for growing a population. The second screen is an exploration map where you are going to go around and select different points on the, the broader map, the broader sphere, to explore with expeditionary groups. This is a very cool little thing that, was, uh, that makes the game feel bigger than it is in some ways. You go out and you figure out what's going on in the world and you get back resources or personnel or things like that to bring back to your city so that the city can continue to grow. But it also brings in new challenges. More people means more mouths to feed, and if you have limited food resources, you can run into trouble that way. So there's always a balance at play that gives you hard choices, and that's what's made it very fun about this genre of sort of survival city builder games. If this game interests you, it may be worth pointing out, and I certainly think this is exciting. This game is definitely referencing very strongly another game by the name of Frostpunk. It's a great game, and one of my favorites, actually. And this game clearly was inspired by and has derived a lot of its best ideas by essentially copying the things that worked well in Frostpunk and then making them their own. I think that's a great thing to do. I have nothing against someone looking at something that's awesome and saying, I could make that and I could do something in more my style, but that would also still take all of the strengths and apply them. And that's what I see has been done here. This game has looked at Frostpunk and said, that's a really fun concept. Let's do that, but different and then executed it very well. I'm excited to keep playing this game when it comes out. In fact, I kept playing the demo well past you know what I consider my review period of the product because I just kept wanting to come back to it and keep playing it. At the end, I actually just stopped myself because I didn't want to spoil everything for me when the actual game comes out. It's such a strong uh, experience that I'm very excited, and I find myself gushing about it here when I should be talking to you about how to play it. All right, so the objective of the game is to survive, but how do you do that? Well, let's go look at the actual UI and understand what the objectives are through that UI. The top bar UI here is the set of resources that we care about. It is the objective, and it tells us how to win or lose this game. It's actually a great UI in that front because it centers for us everything that's important to us. First of all, we note that there are four water resources, so water is obviously going to be a big part of this game if the intro wasn't already evidence enough. There's also a happiness meter, and that's going to be related to your citizenry's happiness. There's a food meter, so probably starving to death is bad. And the last resource here is scrap, which is our primary construction resource and is used for everything. But wait, there's one other ticker here. There's a 15 of 15. What does that indicate? Well, that indicates our total population size and the total unallocated population side. Actually, flip those two, so it's unallocated population and total population. This is a key resource in these 
punk-like games. The objective, I don't know what they're called, but the objective is to leverage your population to do work. That work then has to be greater than the costs of keeping that population alive in order to, you know, grow your population preferably and keep them all alive so that you can keep getting work out of them so you don't run out of the necessary resources for survival. The bottom menu then is the menu informing you what actions you can take and when things get done. So first of all, the circular bar tells you when the working hours are through that yellow bar coming across the uh, the wheel there. There's also a clock, and so there's a specific time of day that your people are going to work, and there's a specific time of day they're going to sleep. You can also fast forward time from here, and you can select different kinds of building button options. That is essentially the core gameplay loop within the city builder components. You build resource buildings, you build research buildings, food buildings, housing to keep your people safe from the elements, and all of these things, and basically go through the usual sort of pseudo-RTS or city builder experience of increasing your economy over time. What push pressure on you as a player is the environment itself. It's inhospitable and difficult. Your people can die. Your citizens can run out of resources and become ill. You need to take care of your population in order to expand. So those pressures are what make the game fun. It's not so much, oh, I placed building here, X, Y, and Z. It's, it's the pressures of trying to make everything run and accomplishing the objective of keeping your citizenry okay. For example, later in this mission, which I don't think this is a spoiler for anybody, it's discovered that the water is running low and you'll have to find new sources of water. So now you're on a race to try and figure out how to get more water before you run out. That's a pressure that gets put on the player that makes the game a lot of fun. The exploration mechanic is handled through mostly dialogue menus. They essentially detail what has happened in text form. You then can make a decision about what you want your party to do, and then they will go out and continue exploring. There's usually technology to find or perhaps new settlers to bring back home and things like that. So it's a key part of the game, and it lends a certain style and uh, aesthetic setting to it. Uh, while keeping the overall UI or overall like gameplay cost low, it keeps you focused on building your city while sort of building this greater narrative. And I've always liked that about this kind of game. As with any review that I try to do, I like to distill things down into two questions. Is it good and is it fun? Is this game good? Well, it's hard to say because I just played a demo. There are some criteria I would want to answer on whether or not it's good or not, like is there enough material here for me to play for a while without uh, running out? Uh, at least get my money's worth, if you will. And is there enough interesting and different challenges in the game that it's not just figure out this one problem and the game is solved? You know, maybe there will be other missions and terrain where I will have to work out how to fit my city within the confines of some other uh, terrain that is difficult. Or perhaps there will be some water problems that I can't solve the way I did before. I don't know what that might look like, but I did watch the trailer, and it looks like there's going to be more stuff like that. So I'm going to hazard that this will probably be a good game, but we'll have to see. So is it fun? Yes, absolutely. This is very fun. I had a great time. Now, it's not for everybody. It's more of a slow burn kind of game. You're investing time and energy into building up a city. It's not going to be uh, very visceral, but there is a lot here to invoke emotion and interest from you. And that's done not just through the gameplay and the storytelling or the weaving in of the narrative, but of the framing of that narrative through the graphical elements, the UI elements, the music, and the general atmospheric type components that really help to facilitate this feeling of investment, like you're really pulling with your settlers to try and make this all work, and you're suffering through those challenges. So I like that a lot about this genre, and this game executes it very well. It was apparent to me immediately that they put a lot of thought into those elements of even the UI, where, just like I was saying at the beginning at the top, the water elements are broken out into four pieces. It's very clear to you that water is going to matter a lot. Then you also think, well, this is after a nuclear wasteland or a nuclear war, so your technology is fairly rudimentary. The clock on the central UI is designed with um, a vacuum tubes, I believe is what those are, and you also have all these buttons that make very clicky, very satisfying sounds that sound like old hardware, not new hardware. It's in designed to evoke in you a feeling of picking up something old and making do with it in order to achieve the core objective, so I like that a lot.
All right, so that, I think, is enough to say about the gameplay and the sort of design and story of the product. But let's just talk real quick about the graphics, which are simple, and you've been seeing them on the screen. But they're good for the genre they're trying to achieve. They, they have a good color palette for what they, the message they're trying to send. The, everything looks nice. Nothing is particularly gross or broken. I, you, it's, it's perfect for what it needs to do, and I'm, I'm very satisfied with the graphics. So there's nothing I'm going to say, especially here, other than it does its job. Next, I want to cover the music. Let's just listen to a little sampling of it. So yeah, it's got a good ambient quality to it, kind of a haunting vibe. Um, it's got some quality to it that gets a little deserty. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of actually Homeworld 2's soundtrack in some places. And so it's it's a good soundtrack for the environment, and it sets the energy well for feeling like, you know, things are sort of desolate and you're just trying to hold together with very limited resources. So I like it. It sounds good. And it complements well with the UI sounds as you heard. So the UI sounds are strong, and the UI itself is really strong, which is important because this is a pretty UI-heavy game. All right. I think that satisfies my requirements for sort of covering what I like and don't like about the game. Uh, and let's just ask the last question I always like to ask, which is, or the last two questions rather, which are, should, will I buy this and should you buy this? Well, in terms of will I buy this when it comes out, uh, the answer is almost certainly yes. I'm going to take a look at it once it comes out and just see what's actually in the game in terms of some of their you know product videos, but the likelihood of me buying this is very high. Um, if you're into this kind of game and you've played Frostpunk and now you're looking for something like Frostpunk until Frostpunk 2 comes out, this looks to be right up your alley. It looks to be up my alley. I'm certainly excited to give it a go. So I'll let you know uh, when I get my hands on it, what I think about it. Uh, but for now, uh, my view on this has been extremely positive. Let's get into the product feedback portion of this review. Now, I am well aware that this game is going to be out very soon, and I wasn't able to get this out as quickly as I had desired, but nevertheless, these are always changes that could be made down the road, or potentially, if someone is looking to make a game like this in the future, they might find this video and find some of this feedback useful to them. It's always good to have a little extra third-party eyes on your work, and I have submitted this feedback, most of it, to the developers via their feedback form, so they should already have a good amount of it. Anyway. My first piece of feedback is a personal pet peeve of mine. You cannot zoom out as far as I would like to. I would like to zoom out to see everything, but I can only zoom out up to some arbitrary ceiling. This happens in a lot of RTSs, and I don't really understand why. Maybe there's a technical limitation here that I'm not familiar with, but Supreme Commander was released in 2007, that's 16 years ago, and it had full zoom out on everything. I don't know how many R RTSs I have played that failed to implement this most fundamental feature for strategy games. It's a strategy game. Why can't I see the whole map? That's driving me nuts, and it's been driving me nuts for years. So please give me full strategic zoom. You don't have to give me every possible icon. I get it, but just let me zoom out so I can get the whole picture. It's fine if I can't make out everything, in my opinion. I don't need all those icons necessarily that Supreme Commander did just to get a good overview of what my terrain looks like. I don't want to have to scroll around everywhere. I just want to zoom out and zoom in. That's much nicer. All right. Done with that pet peeve, but thank you for listening. Next on my list is the very critical, very important UI sound for the research screen switching effect. It's really loud. It hurts my ears. I find it really unpleasant. I like what you're going for. This whole like vacuum tube CRT screen thing works for me, but you need to tone it down a little bit. It's a little high on the high end. The peak really hits hard. It feels nasty. So uh, clean that up. The next piece of feedback is there is actually a settlement ticker tracker that tells you what's going on in the settlement. It's on the bottom left of the screen. Nothing drew my attention there for a while. I probably should have noticed, but I didn't. As a consequence, um, I was actually lost in where the heck one of my expeditions went. It just sort of vanished. It died. I didn't know what happened to it until I discovered the ticker and went back and looked up what happened. Uh, so maybe something just to draw my attention there would be worth looking at it could just be you know i'm being silly and not looking at all the ui elements like i normally do and it's not that big of a deal but just a point of order i guess at one point there was a rain 
uh, that came and saved my settlement from imminent doom. Uh, I also had the farming technology at that point, and it didn't change my water consumption from the farm at all. I think maybe that should be looked at. Speaking of weather effects, at some points there was different weather effects, including a sunny drought and a sandstorm. I didn't feel like these weather effects had good impact visually on the game. They didn't have a lot of uh, aesthetic impact, so I would appreciate it if uh, those were given a little bit more weight. Uh, in Frostpunk, when the weather got really cold, the UI would freeze and make all sorts of sounds, and you would get these sort of edge screen effects, and I'd just like to see a little bit more of that. As you could see, that sandstorm didn't really have a whole lot of pizzazz, so I think juicing that up a little bit would be worthwhile. The last piece of feedback I'll add is the water piping system. So the piping system's neat, and it's a perfectly valid way to do the resource transportation. I'm satisfied with it. I was a little confused, and I didn't feel like the tooltip really told me well enough what to expect with this sort of efficiency thing that we were doing. There were different piping types. It was like copper, or iron, and plastic or something like that, and some were better than others, and I wasn't really clear on how that mechanic was intended to work. I pieced it together after a little while, so not, again, not a huge deal. I'll, I obviously managed to figure it out, and I don't have any footage of me playing around with it to understand what's going on, but basically, if you haven't played this game before, the more efficient piping sends your water more efficiently, so your work is performed better, but it costs more scrap to build, and the longer your pipe from one resource zone to the next, the more expensive it'll be in scrap to build it. Um, that wasn't really clear to me when I first set out, so maybe some explanation there might be helpful. Now, I will say, this game does have an index full of information. I didn't trawl through the whole thing, so maybe it's in there and I just missed it. Um, and I will be reading that, that work guide as I actually get into the game once it releases. So, if it's there, and you don't necessarily have to do anything, because I'll just read the manual, and that's satisfactory to me. Uh, I'm just trying to provide what I experience I did have from the perspective of someone who jumped into the game without doing a whole ton of reading and sort of trying to play it based on the UI elements you have present, because in my mind, a game should teach you how to play it as you're playing it. I think you've done a pretty good job on that overall, so this isn't a very strong criticism. This is actually, generally speaking, a compliment. A lot of what you've done here is fantastic in the UI department. I'm looking to highlight things that could be better. With that, I will wish the development team at uh, Traptix good luck and good fortune with their game release. I know it's soon, and I will be keeping an eye on it. And for the rest of you, thanks so much for coming along. I always appreciate your company. It was great to have you visit, and bye bye